Hey everybody, welcome to part two of this wonderful book by Frank Miller, produced originally by DC Comics and now in this gallery edition by Graffiti Designs, Ronan, Frank Miller, before the Dark Knight return, turns. And now we're doing book two, um, and this is part two, and maybe we'll go past the book two, maybe we'll do book three, I don't know. Let's just get going. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Andre Salazar, this is the channel. We're gonna talk comics. I'm gonna go into the details of this book and um, just checking it out. And this is pretty freaking awesome. Um, so let's just get on into it right now. Uh, this is a great little splash. This page is not in the actual comic as, as it is here in this spot. It's gonna be, it's gonna show up later, but we're just using it as a, as a little uh, transition between book one and book two. Remember, this was originally six parts uh, six books that then got compiled into the trade. So uh, let's just get going here. Uh, we see here, here at the bottom, reduced to 65%. That's pretty uh, classic. That's the way uh, comics are usually done. Uh, 65, 64, 66, around there is when, what usually comics are uh, reduced down to from the 11 by 17. Remember though, he went big on this. So Frank Miller uh, worked in a bigger scale in this book, so uh, he went a little bigger. And uh, this actually looks right here, it says is, this is Ronin 2. So this is the cover for Ronin 2. And uh, as you can tell, uh, this we're gonna see more of this in Dark Knight Returns, these kind of little shots here, um, like TV screens, and uh, almost like a film strip. And I just love the design of this. I definitely wanna incorporate some of this in my book as I'm working on my uh, Shangri-La estates. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a fun little, like, I love, you know, they're not wasting any pages. Every page has something kind of neat. Okay, so now we're, we're uh, hopped right into Ronin part two, page one. Uh, as you remember, Ronin is now in the material world. He's now in the present, the modern world. He's in a sewer, he's lost, he's confused. He's looking for the blood bloodstone sword, and I keep saying Tachi. He's saying Tachi all the time, and uh, we're gonna try to follow. We're gonna follow him a little bit here on this story and how he kind of. Um, well, you'll see. So again, he goes uh, putting a lot of texture, using squiggly sometimes, hatching, cross hatching, really trying a lot of different techniques to give depth and texture. Um, which again, as I said before, I think works perfect as a black and white. And I can imagine that uh, with the colors, works even better. Now we're flipped over to uh, Aquarius and the computer program brain is called Virgo. And this is where we get into Casey, Casey McKenna, who's kind of chief of, um, she's chief of security and maybe like ops kind of a role, and she's our heroine in the story. Uh, we're gonna be following her a lot and what's going on with her. Now, in the original colors, this is all green, and so Lynn uses a lot of greens and yellows for Aquarius, you know, as you might think uh, due to the kind of zodiac. And so there's a lot of that going on, and then when we go back into the, the slums and gutter of the Ronin story, it's more, grays and browns and that kind of um, urban look. So one of the things I really liked in this, I'm just gonna call out, uh, again, I mentioned before, I love when he has these kind of just full black, almost silhouettes of uh, figures, and he does it here again. And we'll, we're gonna see shades of this again in Sin City a lot, but I just love how uh, it just goes right into the background. There is no holding line. There is no outline of these characters. We know that his arm is here and her hand and his back is here, but we don't see the line, the delineation between the background, which is pitch black and his costume, and same thing for her helmet. Um, I never have the balls to do that, but I think I'm gonna have to start doing that and just like, okay, we're just gonna do it and see how it works. Maybe this technique only works because it's pinch black 
And if there was a little bit of light source, he would have to put some of that outline. I don't know, but it looks damn cool. And so uh, it's definitely something to kind of like play with. Uh, also, I really like to see the whiteout and kind of the mistakes and changes. So here there's some clear whiteout where he redid the nostril, decided to redo kind of the hatching on the nose. But notice, it's not like he's doing it cleaner. You know, it's not like he like messed up these lines, these beautiful Frazetta feathered lines and he's, you know, changing it. He, he, it's still got a very rough, a rough look. Um, and then his transitions, again, all his transitions between the two scenes, or not all, but majority of them, are with this duo shades. These big landscape images are kind of the transition between the uh, Aquarius virtual reality kind of, you know, company world and the outside world or the Ronin world. Um, and so here's a great uh, image. And I actually like this better than what Lynn did. Um, Lynn Varley colored it kind of this bluish gray. I don't know if I care for it. I'm gonna just jump over to it real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's cool, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not dogging nobody, but I just think, I mean, that's pretty neat, but I think this is better. <laughs> and I think there's just more, you get more tones here Whereas here, I think things get just blocked out and it becomes more uh, monochromatic. Here we get a little bit more tones. So I like this. Uh, shades of Otomo, uh, manga, stuff like that. But I love the blocks. You know, sh again, Miller is a master of shape, you know? And line, we'll get into the line too later. So here we have him, he is, um, kind of donning this, some robes and clothing. Uh, he's gonna start looking for some help, right? And he goes to this kind of a Salvation Army or a soup kitchen or a place like that. Uh, and uh, I, I really like the way he does hands. I've always liked the way he kind of, he does these little very gestural uh, hands. And you have this very, um, juxtaposition or you know highly detailed highly rendered line work of the face and then these very simple hands and very kind of basic shaped outline so again uh, whenever you have high density of lines and kind of detail next to blankness they both kind of stand out more and, and your eye kind of that just looks more appealing uh, just really great stuff in here I could just sit here and look at this forever, and I still really like the way he's doing the borders. Um, it looks very quick. I don't know how quick it is, but I can't imagine him putting a lot of like deliberate, you know, feathering. It's it seems quick. It's it's got that kind of energy of uh, of expressionistic work. Um, I dig that a lot. And maybe it was quick just because he had to bang this out, right? Art is all about time versus money. So that's really important. Again, some white out spots. And here we can see, you know, the paste. Now, not all of these lettered are pasted up. But you can tell here on all this here, these are cut out. So the original was lettered maybe on some paper or something else and then pasted here. But then sometimes you see it just lettered on the board. And uh, I'm not sure what the reasoning for that was necessarily, but yeah, I do dig it. Yeah, I did, when I did this some comics years and years ago, kind of my first set of comics I started working on, I did it this way and I, um, and I cut them out and pasted them on the paper. And uh, okay, now we're switching. This is the other world, um, sorry, the slums, and then now, boom, now we're in Aquarius and now, line, you know, rapidograph or tech pins. This is European. This looks like, uh, you know, this could be in, in an old issue of heavy metal, you know. So we're, we're kind of hopping styles and, and creating our own, and cre he's creating his own we're out of this. Then we hop back into Ronin, his story, 
And this is where we get into Miller's kind of the underground, CD underground stuff. We're getting kind of, we'll get some kind of Nazi imagery. I'm sorry, but that's Storm. That is Storm. <laughs> you know, maybe these are the Morlocks, you know, type of thing. And this is his take on that. And there'll be some, there's this hippie character um, that will befriend our, our uh, heroine, hero, rather, um, the Ronin in a minute. And so I always like these weird um, bondage-y kind of characters and outfits that he does. Uh, I always think it's kind of interesting doing these like little bondage guys. Um, these pages are actually quite white and clean compared to some of the other ones. Uh, I'm curious, is, is, uh, did he own all this or did he get these from, or did, uh, graffiti designs to grab these from a lot of people. Actually, look at these, how these pa panels are all almost the identical. This one, this one, and this one. It's not the same head, actually. Oh, let me look at this. This is, oh, it is, it is. Okay, look, you can tell. So this here is, is pasted up, yeah. This is a copy. That is the copy. Is this the original? Nope, that's a drawing, that's a drawing. But these two are copies of each other. And you can see it. You can see he photocopied it on a sticker or something and he put that in there. Same thing there. Um, do we have the original? I don't know where the original one was. But yeah, these are the same. Her face is a little different. But yeah, they're kind of going back. I just noticed that. Just, I love when you see that kind of stuff. I love reusing art and kind of like duplicating stuff like that. A lot of panels. Okay, now we start seeing too, these panels are getting cut out and put here. So again, it could have just been because of economy of paid paper, or he kind of played around with the order of the action. They're basically beating the shit out of him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Ronin character just gets, just beat to hell by these thugs. And, you know, Miller's doing his Miller stuff. And I love this. It reminds me too of, uh, John Romita Jr. Sometimes there's there's shots that remind me of that. Maybe it's John Romita Jr. is kind of AP Miller more than anything, but I do like it. This is great. And these are all really good panels to study from. This is a great action here, and he does these great things with his hands. He does this kind of a hand thing. He does that a lot uh, instead of just like spray sprayed out. He kind of like curls them just slightly. You see that a lot in his work. Now let's get even more abstract. And then a nice little, this shot here, close up, this is great. Spits at her, at the Nazi, we're gonna call her Storm, Nazi Storm. Kicks her, kicks him right in the face. And they're gonna put a pound into him and now they just beat him, beat him gone. And He's using whiteouts for the borders. This is kind of an interesting page. If you look at it, he's really going to town. He must have did. Yeah, he he just kind of went to town on this, on this particular page. He's using some kind of tape and stuff to cover up those blacks. There we go. Again, right there, a little bit right there. Wakes up, and now he's kind of crawling. He's still, still saying Tachi, Tachi. Transition, now we're leaving that story to another one. Reduced to 78%, and then here it says 66. So i um, curious about that, because if this was the original size, if you reduce it to 78, uh, let me think about that. Um, yeah, it's because this is smaller. So if you go to 78, it's gonna be the right size. If you go to 66, I think it'll be too small because this is a little bit looks like a little bit smaller of a page. I think that's the deal. Love the shadows of the buildings here. And you got this perspective and these the shadows are coming in. This is the, I like these a lot. Just really kind of neat. Yeah, now we're back in Aquarius. So now we have Casey, she's learning, she's talking to Virgo. Virgo's talking about the two creatures that are now in the, their world. 
Ronan, who Virgo's trying to find because Billy's connected to him, and the demon, Agot. So he's trying to find the demon, and of course, Casey McKenna, head of ops, we'll call it ops, head of uh, security is like, you are crazy, I think you've got a screw loose, we need to get you figured out here, robot. And <laughs> Vertigo, excuse me, Virgo says, well, you know, the demon is a shape, shape changer, Casey. And now we're gonna go into the demon. The demon turns into this hawk, and the demon is gonna mess with uh, Mr. Taggart. Taggart is the CEO. He's doing this deal with Sawa. Sawa is a corporation which wants to convert this bio, uh, bio circuitry technology into uh, to weaponize it, use it for weapons. And Taggart at the beginning here is not for that, does not want to use this technology. It would be improper to use this technology for Armageddon, right? Aquarius will not be party to Armageddon. But unfortunately, something's gonna happen to him and that idea might change. And this is where we have the shape changing happen. The demon appears from Taggart and now he's gonna take Taggart out. This is great here. When he does, destroys him, converts him, and now Agot the Demon is now shape changed into Taggart. Now, Demon as Taggart will want to definitely move forward with the Sawa Corporation's uh, deal and start making some weapons. So Miller's playing with these ideas of, you know, big corporation, you know, weaponizing technology, you know, that kind of deal, that's kind of layered onto this story. Um, and so she's, she's now gonna round the troops, she's got her forces, and she's like, okay, we're gonna go find this demon or this Ronin out there because Virgo's telling us something's going on. So she's getting her forces. And I love these bikes. We're gonna see more of those little like motorcycles. Now I flip over back to the slums and the Ronin gets found by this guy who's like a um, kind of a junkyard guy. We're gonna see him in a little bit. And uh, now Taggart, who's the demon, is talking uh, to, um, What's his name? His name is Learned, I think it is. Learned, which I think is funny. His name is Learned, and they're kind of going back about, you know, should we do this military deal, and what about the technology with ethical issues, stuff like this, and he says it could change the fate of the entire planet, this technology, All right? Going back. Again, these really cool duo shade pages. This is beautiful stuff, man. This one is really nice. Just want to look at it for a minute. Mm. Great line variation. You know, he's using really nice, big, thick, blocky blocks here. And then he goes down into some really small pin work. And I would say none of this is rapidograph, really. This is all kind of a crow quills, maybe some brushes even at times. Some of that might be some tech pins. Yeah, that stuff is. But these bricks, look they could be crow quill because of the line type. Uh, great stuff, this is great. I'd love to see some of the reference he used for this because uh, he's not dreaming this up necessarily. I think that's, that's probably an image somewhere he got. Um, that'd be kind of fun. That would be the next level is like do the artist edition with a supplementary book or in the margins of like, here's like the references, right? That might be peeking back a little bit too far behind the curtain, keeping the kayfabe, so to speak, but that'd be kind of neat too. As a guy who has a folder of, you know, stuff and having worked for a, a big uh, comic book guy who had files and files of reference of everything you could think of. He, um, who shall not be named, has tons of work. Comment below if you wanna know who it is and I'll tell you, but I won't say it here. Okay, 
Great guy, though. Wonderful guy. Uh, this is, again, Mobius. <laughs> I love it. I mean, just as a guy who does, you know, every night work on some comics for a few hours, this alone took, you know, that took some time, man. This took an hour or two, maybe more, to just bang out all these damn little squares and, and background and stuff. Um, you know? That just takes a lot of time. There's no white, there's a little white out there, but none of this is whited out. He's not going, this is, remember, this is the original. So he's just going in here, he's putting this in. And um, man, that's just really neat. I just like it, I like it. No rulers, you know. Um, in fact, now I'm thinking, why am I ruling my stuff? Sometimes I don't rule her stuff, but yeah, this is just great, dude. It's great, it's just great. He used, he used uh, white out here to kind of get that texture. You could tell a little bit. And now the, um, this guy who helped the Ronin and put him in his workshop and now he's like taking apart these robotic arms because he's seen that the, the, the Ronin has these robotic arms, of course, similar to Billy, who's, who's paraplegic and doesn't have arms, right? Remember Billy? Use these big mechanical arms because of his psychic, uh, his psychic powers. Ronan has that, and that's why there, there's that connection. And so he's trying to use it. But guess what? These little robot arms are not going to be able to go on your little spaceship or whatever you're building. And these arms start choking that mofo. Chokes him, maybe to death. I'm not sure if it shows that he's dead, but probably. And the robot arms with their little circuitry, which I love this stuff. This is again, you know, French comics. It gets connected again, so dig it. Take a drink every time I mention Mobius or French comics, right? Um, I'll start saying Monera. <laughs> okay, connects it, he's back. I like this a lot too. We're gonna see a lot of this in, in Sin City. Um, does Sin City have one of these? I have to look it up. There might be. I don't, because I think he's never sold Sin City artwork. I want to say he's never sold it. I'm going to look that up. There might be like a the Dame to Kill for or something. That would be fun to look at. Um, it would be a lot of fun. Yep. This is great stuff. It's really ballsy Just choices. And now he's going off. Now he's got this sword. And now he's going to go back where he got beat up. And this is a great page, Tachi. So what's that meaning, Q? It means you're not like a sword. We got the numbers. We are in our hands out lady. Okay, let's go get them. And now, that's a great page, or panel. He just like starts kicking some ass. And Miller is spray, he's spraying. This looks like white out. It's not white acrylic paint. Well, again, it's like a, maybe he diluted it a bit. I don't know. It's really thick there. It looks really thicky. So he's just uh, slicing and slashing dudes up. Again, great use of word balloon, cat, uh, sound effects as the panel border. you got to do that. This is really, really great. Now I'm thinking about my story that I'm working on these pages. I don't have any good sound effects. I might have to... Yeah, I got a couple. Might have to put some more in. Um, I love this stuff. Really try to incorporate that. And there you go. This is great. This is classic Miller, you know, Wolverine or Daredevil stuff. Great, great stuff. Just enough um, definition and texture, right? Or so you have just enough value changes. You got the blank, but then those just those little stripes give it just a little bit of depth and value. Okay. And this is this is very interesting how he does it. Very simple. Right? That's a great page. I love all his excuse me, the isometric stuff. All the isometric kind of like drawings. Simple line, and he just uses a simple line outline, and then he'll just put a few little like brush stroke to just uh, 
add in the creases of the clothing, you know, the, at the joints or at the crotch or at certain spots just to kind of give a little bit of of clothing texture on there, but it's just basic, but in a good way. And that is, yeah, take a drink, Mobius, right there. Those lines giving that kind of depth. Great, this is great. Okay, and then again, we get the big um, art inverted to best replicate the artist's desired presentation. Art as originally created can seem to be on page 66 and 67. Uh, let me look at my book. I'm curious. So how does that look? Because I would say, let's look it up. Mm, we just did that. Did that, that, that. Oh, here it is. Okay. Wow, I just don't get it. This does not look nearly as good as this. What the freak, right? Am I alone? This looks way better. Even if it wasn't the purple. It just, I just don't like this. And when it says it's invert, yeah, I see, yeah. Yeah, this is just um, superior. The inversion, because it's the white, this is white, so he flipped it to invert this. Um, but, yeah, this just looks better. I don't know what to say other than that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not a fan of the way these are kind of like this toned out. Um, I think you just lose a lot. There's a lot of detail that you're losing. Um, but, I don't know what it is. That's why we got this, right? We can check this out. Okay, and that was book two. But guess what? What time is it? It's been 26 minutes. F it, as Bill Riley would say, let's do this, let's do the next one. Let's just keep going. Part three. Baug. Not scanned from original art, but look at this. Look at these wonderful, beautiful lines. Look at this freaking page. I love his horse. We're gonna see much of those horses and look at these beautiful bikes. This actually is probably maybe one of my favorite pieces yet. This is really nice. Yeah, and look, the only, you know, blacks is right here to show this kind of elbow bend, which is kind of an interesting choice. He didn't have to do that. I wonder why he did that. And this here, this back, this back here, those lines just coming out like that. Yeah, this is great. This is really cool. Yeah, I'm really curious about that, why he did that there. Hmm, because he could have put it here, he could have like did something there. Yeah, okay. Horses, whoa, what is on this page? This is kind of great. They're like, he dropped, spilt, there is some sort of like, it looks like coffee spilled, but it's probably just water and the water just over time aged it. I'm assuming it's water. I don't know. I do know that these are all cut out though. There's some serious like razor blades on this. I'm not sure what that's all about because this, this is actually the same page. So I don't quite get that. A little confused. I love this little sequence, this little like fantasy little montage. Um, I love the line. I love the way that the blacks are. There are no blacks, it's just hatching. And you know, when Batman goes into that with that big horse in that battle with the the uh, mutants, we see these horses, and he does a great job of these horses. Uh, okay, this is fun. I'm excited about this, because this is where we start, this is one of the reasons why I wanted the book, right? Is you get to really see these little acetate pages and how they worked with the original art. So, um, you know, he draws this on whiteboard. So he's got this on the DC Comics, you know, blue line board. Shoot blue line at 90%, that's interesting. 190% there, I'd, I'd love to learn a little bit more about those. And then he puts on this acetate, these guys, which has our silhouettes with like a gray tone, you know, deleter or screen tones on here. And then he slaps that on there. Ah, oh, that just looks so cool, man. 
I just love that stuff. I love it. I love I love these little layers. Look. Boom, boom. Doesn't that look cool? Isn't that neat? I just think it's so neat, dude. <laughs> love it. I love these film strip looking things. I love it. We see it in Dark Knight Returns. I just think it's so cool. Uh, she's basically, Casey is reviewing the data of the, you know, this Japanese guy who looks like a samurai walking around, killing her men, killing, you know, uh, the corporation's security. And she's like, guys, uh, Tagger and everybody, we got to figure out what this is going on. Because this looks like this guy's been reincarnated because of Aquarius and Billy, and we got to stop him. And look at that. Isn't that great? It looks like a Darwin Cook. Um, wonderful. So freaking cool. So um, I love these film strips. I need to figure out how to incorporate that. Just shoehorn that on my story. Uh, now we're back to the horses. And this is the the saddling or bridling of uh, the horse for the Ronin. And uh, just so, so cool. I dig it a lot. And then now we're going again. We're doing more of this. All penciled out. Look, I mean, all inked. You know, graph looks like something like a repeater graph, I would say. And just those kind of little, all these little lines, look at that, that's great too. He whited out all this, redid the face, didn't like it. Maybe he put it out in the shadow and he said, you know what, this is not gonna have shadow. Boom, and then we throw this in there. So, so that works because if it was just all the white, if it was just all uh, line work, I think it wouldn't work. But because now we have our spot, we're spotting our blacks here. So that's our blacks that are getting spotted, which work out, work out pretty good. Okay. Yeah, this is very, very cool. Now we're back again at that scene. He's getting the horse. He's kind of like uh, breaking the horse in some way or kind of taming it to get it to ride. Look at that. That's a great. That's that's really cool, really cool image. I like that a lot. And then we've got this hippie kind of character that's gonna be his kind of manager, so to speak. And so uh, they're gonna work together. Switching up teams. We got this, which was interesting, kind of backwards, upside down. Very a much smaller one. You know, usually they've, they've been pretty big, so it's kind of working a little smaller on this one but it's growing. Aquarius is growing, and it's taking over more and more of the city. The complex is taking over stuff. Um, and now look at this. We're now back in the hub. Um, the biocircuitry is getting more and more organic, it feels, and more encompassing. And now it's Casey uh, is kind of communicating with Virgo and kind of figuring this out and looking for Billy. Billy's missing, they're still trying to find him. And uh, Virgo's like, you gotta go find this Ronin and you gotta go go get rid of this, this demon that could be here. Now this is an interesting segment because we got these, a, uh, a black guy and a white guy that are being kind of uh, getting ready to be tortured in some way. And we think that maybe there's a pit, there's a pit here, these guys are taunting them. You know, they're on the wrong side of the tracks, they're on the wrong side of the, the gang warfare, and we don't know what's going on. Um, are there lions, <laughs> or are they gonna burn them at the stake, or we don't know what's going on. But they're getting kind of tormented. This is awesome. Just boom. Look at this, look at those toes, that foot. So well done. Look, all that leg is just those little lines right there. Boom, boom, boom. You don't always see pencil. You see every now and then you see a hint of a pencil. But he's erasing the hell out of it so well. You see a little pencil there. But uh, I'd love to see like how did he did he draft this out with just a really light pencil or what? Yeah. I mean, did he work it a lot or not? I don't know. You know, I'd love to see also the reference for that because that was a, I'm sure that's a photograph of something somewhere. Maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just whipped it out. 
and now he's in the middle. So Ronan is going to get in these situations kind of like a, you know, um, fistful of dollars or, or you know, uh, Solomon's tale where there's going to be these little situations of a, of get in the middle of these of these kind of moral, moral questions and quandaries, and he's gonna help out. I love these panels, these faces. I love that. I like that a lot. Yeah, they're simple. Oh, what's this? Now remember, I haven't seen any of this, so this is new to me. This is a uh, this is kind of cool. What's going on here? Previously unpublished earlier version of page nineteen. So he had this is the unpublished. This is really, really cool, and this is the published. Let's take a look at what do we see here. Uh, what's going on differently? Okay, there's some, there's some panel, there's some zooming in basically. So here, we're at this spot, and then in the finale, we're zooming in, we're moving that up. Um, I should kind of like that that way. This just gets, just gets zoomed in tighter. What else is changing? Oh yeah, this is different too. Going from this to this. I mean, would you think after you do this page, you're like, oh man, I really just don't like, I wanted this a little tighter. And so you redo this? That seems kind of crazy. I mean, the, the amount of detail and uh, tension. Right, from there to there. Yeah, I can see how this is, you know, this is more reflective maybe with the hand. And that's not so much. Uh, so that's the same. Actually, I think we can tell the sames because they're pasted up. So that's the same, right? Yeah, that's pasted. so. So same changed up. So she's drinking a martini in this one. She was there too, but they just, she just zoomed them up a bit, changed the hair slightly. Uh, yeah, just another rendering. Just decided to do it differently. Did the eyes a little different here. Same, same, change that, just to make it maybe look, this maybe looks a little bit too ma masculine, a little bit more feminine perhaps. But um, not drastic changes, but enough to where he's like, oh, I'm gonna redraw this, these panels. Huh, that's kind of a, it's kind of a neat little lesson there. Okay. 37, we're gonna keep going. Uh, look at this detail, wow. That's pretty fascinating. This is uh, Taggart talking to Sawa Corporation. Sawa Corporation is the, the guys that are doing the deal that wanna wanna create these, uh, wanna use the technology for weapons. Kojima, Mr. Kojima is part of Sawa. It's a great hand there. I like that a lot. No hard blacks in any of this stuff. So different than Sin City, man. Sin City just like, just throws it back. Okay, this is great. Oh, look at this. Really neat. I love the way he's putting it. It's like one and two, right? Yeah, it's just two levels. Same thing here, right? One and two, ones. He'll do ones, ones, ones. Yeah, and then he'll do these kind of like give some shape. A little bit of like maybe uh, Barry Windsor Smith or um, Bernie Wrightson kind of. I mean, just in concept of like, of creating these blocks and shapes. And, uh, he just chopped his hands off. Look at that. Yeah, this is a great two-page spread, isn't it? Look at that. Comes down, thinks he's tough with his big club, but guess what? You ain't fighting no samurai, homie. Shakonk. Foom. Beautiful, beautiful little little lines. Yeah, he's just using a little... Uh, that, that's a crow quill or something. That's not a tech pen. This might be, though. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's not a straight line. He's not using a ruler. This is not a ruler. This is just him just going out there and maybe pausing just a little bit and then yeah 
and look at this. This is really neat too. The sword, and then this sword becomes the inner kind of, um, uh, what is that called? Gill, not gill. Uh, the little like divot in the blade. I want to say gut, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's clever. That's clever. That's a great. That's a great image too. That's clever. Okay, now we have the most unromantic of love scenes, and there's a reason for that. But this is definitely uh, two lovers who um, are not connecting at all, and that is going to be. Uh, we're gonna see more of that. What's the fallout of that business? Um, very blocky. Uh, very kind of sad. This this whole this whole thing with. Um, you know, she's with the kind of top scientists who created the technology of Aquarius. And so there's some stress there with what's happening, how Aquarius is now going to go into uh, this Sawa deal with the weapons. And now the Ronin's ready to go kick some ass. And who's he going to kick? He's going to kick some Nazi ass because Nazis and Miller aren't down. And so we're going to do some of that business. And there's going to be some deal making. He's like, well, you know what? You go deal with those. You know, you go. I'll pay you X amount to go defeat the other gang's rival boss. Right? And then that boss is like, oh, I'll pay you this Y amount to kill that guy. So they're going after each other. Oh, this this is great. The horror, the horror of this is great. So they're in this little... Uh, Rona wants that, da, da, da. and then check this out. They're like afraid because now we see those two guys at the stake. Guess what's about to happen? Boom. This panel is awesome. This is horrific. In that pit were all these decrepit, you know, diseased subhumans that are now gonna, we assume, tear apart these guys alive. This is manga, baby. This is, uh, this is manga right here, this whole thing. So, a little bit of the East. I love it. He's using black for the hair though, isn't he? He's not kind of hatching that out. He's not putting any texture. It's just big black. Here's Taggart. And the, the Possessed by the Demon. It's a great page, it's really big. I really like that image, yeah. Those boots, he always put those little boots like that. Dig it. Um, here's where have, they're having that conversation about making deals with the two uh, leaders of the gang. Who's gonna give them better money for doing it? Kinda like, again, like that, uh, this full dollars. And here's another one's great, great images. Uh, iconic, almost very similar to that Dark Knight Returns image of uh, Batman on the horse. Great, great image, the horse. And then you got these really cool tech bikes that are all tricked out with their techy stuff. This is really neat. Shoots that one arrow, it's going off. It's gonna do some damage. Shabong! Look at that. They're tasering them. They got these little like electrode guys on them. Gonna zap them good. Totally different, like what is going on, right? Totally different style. He's using a pin here. It's just these light little lines to show some, some texture depth. And then this is like a whole nother thing. Because he's been electrified, because there's like a shock involved, he's doing another style. He's using a brush. He's using kind of craziness. Um, he could have penciled it exactly the same both, but he's inking in a completely different style. Uh, that just is really neat. And it's just like crazy. And now, okay, and now we'll do this. And so now we're gonna go into this whole other style. And this is, you know, Miller doing a pre um, Sin City. And now the machine is being destroyed. It's kind of feedback. The, the electric feedback now is going back the other way, blowing up these um, security guys from um, Aquarius. And this is pasted up. This is the same image. There's the original. 
copies this and just copied that right there. It works really well. It works really well. Yeah, these are great. These is really great. Look, it's going all the way out. It's going past the lines. He's like, it's going out to the bleeds, right? This is going all the way out. Look at that spokes, that wheel. That is rad. That foot, black explosion, whatever these things are. Look at that shooting out. That's great. Okay, look at that. What does that look like, right? Silhouettes. This is wonderful. I love it when the when it just kind of bleeds into the complete blackness. This is real. This is this is you know Winsor Smith. I mean, um, Bernie Wrightson. We're just talking about. And now this is not. This is almost like a you know Bill Sienkiewicz or something. Just very a lot of uh, contour line drawings. You know, maybe not even sketched out. Just like just drawing. And it's easy in this like fugue state, you know, after being beat up and everything. Those are great. Oh, this is wonderful. I just keep saying this is great every time. Yeah. We see this again and again where we are using white, the con this high contrast using white for blood against the black background. And uh, we'll see that again with Marv and, and those characters and uh, it works really, really well. And, and on top of that, you do have this, this cross hatching here that gives it uh, a depth. There we go, boom. Oh, look at that. Is that not awesome? Tell me that's not awesome, that's great. Okay, this was 46 minutes, that's, we're done. We did uh, parts two and three today. We've got another halfway to go, and we will be doing that on the next part of this. Thank you very much for watching. You know, I would say subscribe to the channel because you're going to be able to see all this. Hit that bell icon so you can know when the next ones are. We're not just doing this one. We're also doing, I have a Bill Sienkiewicz artist edition coming in the mail. I have the Lone Wolf and Cub. I've got Love and Rockets I'm talking about. i got a bunch of stuff I'm talking about. Please check it out and uh, stay with me. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye, guys.